Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, what a time to be an Overwatch fan it is. We're about to head headfirst into a no hold barred fight for the death in Hawaii, or at least for some teams, between the Mayhem and the Chongdu Hunters, two teams who are absolutely bombastic, not only on the battlefield, but also off it here, Matt. Very, very hard to know what to expect from these two. Yeah, you know, the Mayhem lose a really close series uh, to Shanghai. Uh, I actually really like the Mayhem as potentially like the favorite coming in, just because they can play every comp uh, really well across the board. Uh, I'm more interested how Chengdu comes out and plays today. I was uh, I was a little underwhelmed with how they performed against the Dallas Fuel the other day. I thought they could come in and do some really interesting things and really kind of counter strat the Dallas Fuel. And they weren't able to do that. You know, Dallas was running a ton of Sombra. They continued to run the Wrecking Ball into it. Gaga was hacked every single time. It felt like, you know, first player dead. I feel like we're going to have to see some adjustments from the Hunters today. Definitely feels like Gaga lost a little bit of his luster in that series against the Dallas Fuel, but he has a chance to reclaim some of that here against the Foreign Mayhem. The problem for him is that he's going up against someone who came into the main melee as number one on the list of tanks, according to IBM Watson, of course. That's OG. This roster now, I mean, we saw OG have a fantastic week three, definitely off the back of them integrating more Reinhardt-based compositions in OG just looked excellent. And one thing that was sort of teased on the desk, I think it was Scott that said, you know, Big Miyaki, maybe they don't have that sort of Tracer Echo style play, but they're looking very, very good, you know, when it comes to those Reinhardt Lucio compositions that they've been sort of working in a little bit more. And not to speak ill of the backline as well on this team, and Gangnam Jin obviously is, is, you know, really highly rated as a support player in general. The Florida Mayhem, I think, uh, you know, it was a close series against the Dragons. I mean, the Dragons have had three six map affairs in a row, and obviously the Mayhem took them all the way there as well. Matt, there's got to be fire in their belly because they know they are absolutely in the mix here as a, as a real contender to take this whole thing away. Right, because you wouldn't necessarily say that the Florida Mayhem are the strongest at any of the compositions that the teams play currently, but they can play all of them at a very high level, where they can take you to certain maps and force you into games that you don't exactly feel confident in playing, as we take a look at Chengdu's starting lineup. Uh, Leave and Jinmu have been fantastic in terms of the damage dealers. Uh, Elsa was somebody that uh, a lot of people expected them to maybe try and go after uh, Lee Jae, who ends up on the Hangzhou Spark. Uh, they keep Elsa, and he's actually played quite well. I think it's also a little bit easier to see Elsa play well with this team when they're not have to play off meta ball compositions all the time, where they can play you know, stuff that's a little bit more standard that other teams are practicing. Uh, you can put him in positions to succeed. And then, uh, like Johnny said, a pretty underrated backline. Uh, IBM power rankings uh, don't rate them the highest, but uh, they definitely play above that, I feel like. Something that was mentioned maybe in the first series is that between these two teams, number Yaki and Lee are number one and two on DPS rankings from IBM Watson coming into this May melee, respectively. So you are looking at the top DPS players in the world, according to our AI friends so far. And, and, and Gaga obviously is listed at number three for tanks. So some serious high flyers. And speaking of which, we see Jimmy play a lot of that Farah. Like it's a bit Farah somber here from the, the Hunters. And they were exposed a little bit, I think, against Dallas map because that Farah composition with Sombra takes some time in those team fights to really get going. And with Dallas playing this, you know, this Lucio and Moira just piled in composition, Jinmu didn't have the chance to make his impact felt before key members of his team had already been taken down. The Mayhem haven't demonstrated like a proclivity to go to that sort of setup. So Li Zhang Tao being our first map here could be quite telling of how these two teams stack up well, with their styles. Well, the thing that they'll do, Florida, like they, they the thing that Dallas doesn't do is right, like play the McCree, play Soldier 76. I mean, the Mayhem are even locking the legs now, right? Yeah, they so, did, yeah. Uh, so if the Farah comes into play, uh, they'll definitely have more counters to it uh, than what we saw the Dallas Fuel train do, but the Dallas Fuel are able to deal with it. So uh, we'll see as we jump into game what both of these teams decide to play. This, it'll be uh, Control Center first, uh, where here you think uh, we did see Jinmu actually play the Farah on this the other day. I yes. doubt you do it here against Florida, though. I mean, BQB well, has a, a very strong McCree. He could come out and play something along those lines. Like, ready for that. The issue here is that you can't really break line of sight as far on the main point unless you touch the ground. Uh, two sort of things that don't really mix, uh, or especially for Farah, really don't want to be there. The Junkrat wouldn't be out of the question for a player like Jinmu or a team like the Chongyu Hunters. 
I mean, they are all about chaos. And the Mayhem, well, it's in their name, Matt. You know that Florida, they play hard and fast here. This is going to be a matchup to remember, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Florida Mayhem versus the Chengdu Hunters here. And it's do or die for both of these teams. Uh, this is hilarious because now you have the Florida Mayhem playing Farah. You fully expected <laughs> if somebody was going to play it, it'd be the Hunters. And maybe they kind of thought like, hey, they're not going to expect oh. us to play the Farah and we don't expect them to do so. As is going to be Chengdu going back towards the spawn. We're going to see Soldier 76 straight away. Uh, as we're going to see Soldier Sombra come out here from Chengdu as uh, it'll be BQB on McCree. So leave trying to get the high ground here on 76 is... Uh, uh, look, if there was a way you were going to see this series go, you know, uh, Soldier oh! 76 lock in, in the first 30 seconds is uh, should tell you a lot like how this one could end up. Leave absolutely clean with their slime. Just got absolutely ruined as he tried to cross and BQB has no shields to stand behind. Yaki definitely needs to be very, very careful as Soldier 76... I mean, these two teams are playing each other's approaches from their previous games against the, one another. Yeah, big changes are going to come in here for the Florida Mayhem as uh, they'll play, yep, May McCree. So this is actually interesting. They kind of get them onto the rush, and you have Reinhardt for Gaga here. So let's see how Florida Mayhem plays with this brawly composition, right? You have the Immortality Field, you have the May McCree, really good survivability. Haven't seen much Reinhardt from Chengdu so far. Let's see how Gaga looks here. It's going to be Jinder that goes down first, though. BQB is able to find Purchase with a headshot. Funk throws up the amplification matrix, but of course there's going to be a May wall in the way. Here's the dead eye. Elsa takes a big hit from that one. He still is able to use the defense matrix quite well. Nisha though won't get away from the flashbang here, and the hunters look to be getting cleaned off the point. It's a rather late immortality field, and it is definitely too little at this point. Yes, it'll be a flip, but 51% here, good for the hunters, and you're going to end up with uh, EMP shatter. Uh, EMP tack visor. Uh, you'll you'll have some ultimate combos here. Uh, if your Chung Duke Jinmu gets uh, caught out <laughs> trying to get back to a health pack, so you'll have to wait a little bit for him. But some pretty decent combos coming up here for the hunters, where you should be able to flip the point back. Uh, you're going to have even sound barrier here too. Lee. Tough ask to really find anything with a tactical visor outside of maybe an out of position of slime here. Defense matrix and Reinhardt shield and a main wall to block that line of sight, but it's playing from a really awkward angle to dodge from. So here's the application matrix. Lee wants to flank around here. Sees Kang Nam Jin. Oh. Here comes that tactical visor now. How much value do you get? He's being chased down by BQB. He seems to not care about the attack visor at all. And here's the cap in progress for the hunters. They roll over the top. It's a big EMP from Jin Yu to set it up. Yeah, he like went on, uh, he went on a flank with the attack visor, and then as soon as he popped it and just got the attention, he just kind of ran away. Uh, and then the EMP came in, and maybe you just kind of drag players away, and take their attention off the Sombra. As uh, we have a switch from Jinmu now going over to the Junkrat. So the answer to the May McCree uh, for the Chengdu Hunters after the Sombra EMP seems to be Junk 76. So a ton of damage, right? Uh, being able to burn these shields down quite quickly, being able to burn the May walls down pretty fast with that Junkrat Soldier 76 combo. It's very, uh, very unusual, though. Florida have to approach relatively predictably, so Jinmu can, you know, pre-position himself at a good spot to get value out of a lot of this explosive damage, but Gaga could be in trouble here. Has to be a sound barrier that comes out, but he gets frozen up. No one can save the right heart for the Hunters now, and the Mayhem, it's Bloodlust. They're looking to clean Chongdu off now, and I mean, not a moment too soon here. Lee looking dangerous behind the amplification Matrix, but again, she also needs time to have an impact in the fight, and he didn't get enough of it. Yeah, and, and the way that Florida plays this, Mitch, where you have the, the May walls, the, you know, and they use the Lucio speed boost and you run them down, like the, the Hunter strategy of burning down the shields, burning down the May wall doesn't really work because the Florida Mayhem just push on up and get that first kill so fast, and that's really what dictates these fights. And leave now on the Symmetra. They're going to TP behind, go straight to the point. But Jimmy's already down. They've already lost the, so much of their damage, and it's a knock-up on Lee that leaves them vulnerable to Gangnam Jin. Application Matrix was circumvented, sure, but the Hunters still eventually had to stand and fight, and they were really staggered in their positioning. There's a large we Earth seen, Shatter here for OG. We've seen, what, three changes for Jinmu thus far? Three for Leave is the, the DPS kind of rotating around here for Chengdu, trying to find an answer. Is no! be a Shatter from OG, that is huge. Unbelievable! That may have been set up with a flashbang from BQB, but you cannot ask for much more than that. 
Perfect stuff here for the Florida Mayhem. The Chongyu Hunters, oh, they're rattled, Matt. Oh, 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 we could take a look at that one again. As he's actually <laughs> playing the corner, and he's got his shield up, just kind of uh, being able to turn, look around. And that may have just been a call to BQB, jump around the corner, hit a flashbang, or it, it just being able to have that information as OG and land that huge shatter as they come in. Absolutely perfect, and the Mayhem knew that was the only ultimate that they really had to play around. Let's here's your, here's your replay. Let's see. OG. Yeah, he's, he, yep. Clear vision. Yeah, he sees. Oh, oh look at that. man. McCree gets kill credit there, so yeah, it's got to be the flash. Very nicely done for the like, Mayhem. Yeah, and, he, and I think what happens is, is uh, BQB actually sees the defense matrix coming in. So this is what I was actually going to say uh, when we were going back and forth with Johnny, but then I decided to insult him and Scott. Uh, yep. Is that they don't have to play? They don't have to sub check me in. They can play this, where they can play Sombra Tracer. BQB has a very good Sombra. We've seen it played. I know over his history in the Overwatch League. They can play something along this uh, along these lines, and I feel like they could be pretty good at it. Okay, uh, so this that Gangnam Jin just gets uh, domed up by the bar in the sky. But this is that Dallas fuel composition, right? It's right. It's very divey. It's it's very in your face kind of dive. And the mayhem though, they need to they need to find these kills very early on. Uh, also, unless they hack Gaga specifically. It's a little bit hard to catch in here. The Mayhem, they're, they're looking for a target. I mean, Monk, obviously, is going to have to change his name to Monka S because he's got to be pressured a heck of a lot here with this setup. But if the Mayhem don't find a target, they don't get a player advantage or two, then Jinmu does have enough time to have an impact. It's, you look at, I mean, oh. look at this. Again, Gangnam Jin gets picked off once more, and Jinmu looking imperious now. Oh. Impassive visage. Uh, I mean, we know how good he is on the Vara, right? Uh, we, we've seen this from Jinmu before. And if you if you allow Gaga to just roam around on the ball and disrupt, and you don't get these hacks like you're mentioning, uh, th this is going to be a very difficult point for the Florida Mayhem to win. You're going to take so much damage from the far in the sky, and then also the the ball is so disruptive. Gangnam Jin's very low right now. League was able to find the kill on Slime with a bit of a damage boost. And there's a trade of tanks here, but the Mayhem, I think they their positioning got staggered a little bit as they crossed the bridge. A concussive blast from Jinmu kind of drives a wedge between them and. They can't get everybody on site when they're needed. It's just the poke damage from the bar. And then by time the, the speed and the dive comes in, Gaga just pile drives, does a ton of damage. The bar rocket's still laying down, and then the cleanup is there for Leaf. It's, uh, it's well executed from Chengdu thus far. As, uh, you can see just all of the defense matrix and Gargoyle needs to be used across the bridge. Jinmu trying to deal with the Wrecking Ball inside. BQB is going to go down to the barrage from the man himself. And he's pretty safe up there for the time being. Leaves forced away right now by Slam. And Gangnam Jin's going to have to come in with Coalescence. But again, they're still lacking that Sombra. Still no EMP online yet. And the Hunters are approaching 85% for Monks down. Big healing now out of the picture for the Chongju Hunters. But that doesn't answer the question of how Florida take the point here. They need to break through. But they've lost their big healer as well. And now both teams are running on fumes. Slime now goes for a sound barrier. OG just tries to dome out that self-destruct. He does cap it off nicely. And he barely gets away after getting lead. Yeah, it's going to be a contest still, though, for the Florida Mayhem here. You're going to have the EMP coming back in. That'll be Elsa getting d -max. You would love if you're Florida to be able to flip this point without having to use that EMP. Jinmu pressuring here from the left-hand side. Gaga is hit with that EMP. Oh, that's dangerous. The Hunters, though, don't mind too much. They force a lot from the Florida Mayhem. Florida have to pile well all of their resources just to get to play the game. See Gargoyle with that defense matrix there, puts it right in front of Jinmu so BQB can get the hack, finish him off. Is so, so this is what's good about uh, obviously Florida extending them out by flipping the point, but it's much harder to attack with this far than like hold the point. Uh, we, we've seen that before in the past, especially like with far compositions on like Oasis, where it's a little bit harder to make it work once you've lost the point. You see teams often switch off of it at that point, but and maybe with the barrage coming through for Jinmu here, you'll stay on it. It's easier to just to stick a defense matrix in Jinmu's direction here. Makes you wonder though, if the Mayhem are gonna want to start the fight. Seems a bit risky to push the bridge against a potential passive blast that could sort of knock them askew. Here's Gaga. 
Wrecking Ball on the points line, going to be able to dodge the minefield by using the wall run, but OG was not as lucky. He backs up into one of those mines and falls, but Leave is taken out elsewhere. He gets hacked manually by BQB, and Gargoyle's able to swoop him and pick up the kill. Defense Matrix Death's probably going to be employed to try and stop Jinri for causing problems, but he won't be denied. He finds two, and it's both supports falling by his hand. Yes, he's still in action. Yes, is still pocketing him, and yes! He gets rid of another. It's BQB down as the Hunters take control now as we head into overtime. OG looking worse for wear. Gargoyle also looking pretty haggard now as Slime desperately tries to keep them in the fight but Yaki is felled by Jinmu and that Lucio is going to struggle. Somehow Gargoyle gets good pressure on the Jinmu but not enough to get the kill. 2 HP was all he had left but he stays alive. Dutifully Nisha keeps him in the fight here. 99 to 57% and Gangnam Jin going down for a second time in this fight. Lee cleans him up and it's going to be very difficult for the Mayhem to get any semblance of a re take now. With Gargoyle finally being removed, it's full stall. Yaki forced to recall. Slime is back. BQB's there with an EMP. He can make this happen. Fireflies get in with the EMP. You're kidding me. OG roll straight in. They get rid of Nisha. No mercy. No resurrect. Leave has gone down and somehow this is still going. The Mayhem stay in the fight. Self-destruct keeps them off the point for a short time out, but they are still in this. OG rolling on the point. Elsa cleared out and the Mayhem are going to take this back. And it's Slime able to contest for what feels like forever. Yaki there as well. BQB. Unbelievable! EMP. How in the world do you let that happen if you're Chengdu? Uh, Jinmu hits like a crazy direct on the Slime after he gets hacked. And they've already taken down Gangnam Jin. It looks like they're going to be able to hold on and take this point. Is uh, They could have just seen map number one just slip from their grasp. One of the most unlikely retakes I think we've ever seen. And things might be going from bad to worse for the Hunters. Gangnam Jin the only cash it. He leave had to spin a pulse bomb and then Ana kill. The Mayhem though may be in trouble now. Nisha, he clocks him. Gets rid of Slime. Now it goes for the Valkyrie and the Hunters might be able to stick around. Jinmu's Barrage finds BQB but Gargoyle cleans him off. The point got flipped. The Mayhem have to retake this now. Yaki has the dash back there. Nisha sits on. I can't believe this. A self-destruct on the outside catches the Mercy. Pulse Bomb connects with Elsa. He couldn't eat that one up and it has to be a coalescence. Quickly deployed. Try and keep the Diva alive. Well, it works. Yaki gets a Nano Boost now. Not really usual target, but it's desperation. It's just instinct and nothing else for the Mayhem right now. Slime goes down. Lee locks the legs and comes straight in with a Helix Rocket and a Flourish. Yaki trying to pressure Jinmu down. He translocates away. Uh, another another EMP. EMP. Another EMP. Elsa is hacked. Can they get him out of the mech? Yes! But Gangnam Jin is taken down, so the Mayhem only had that Lucio healing. It may not matter though. A chance to flip the point back for Florida. A chance to stay this execution. Gargoyle gets that kill, but is eventually demeched. Lee traded out here. This is like Tiny Overwatch all over again. Yaki gets knocked up though. That's quite big. Tough for him now to blink away. He didn't have the recall, and oh. somehow the Hunters stay in it! Unbelievable! <laughs> what is this oh. game? It's just the first two points, man. So, I don't know, I don't so, have the energy so, for this! So the way so the way they're actually able to flip the point is uh, Gaga drops a minefield uh, on basically his side of the point. Like when he comes over the bridge as Wrecking Ball, drops the mines on that side, and then just goes to the other one. You saw Yaki, he actually was trying to get through the right hand side. Like there was a little bit of sliver, like a hole in where the minefield was and like a, a gap in the door. Uh, but he's not able to just dart through there as tracers easily. And that's what allows them to flip the point. Oh, but man, I mean, BQB coming back with these EMPs time and time again, uh, that was way too close to call. So the Hunters look to be going, uh, I think, leave. Does he go to the uh, Tracer after this? Yeah, he's going to go Tracer. So this is the same exact type of composition. Uh, this will be the Florida Mayhem playing the McCree right off the bat. So McCree with the Brigitte. So uh, really going to be difficult for Gaga to go in, get a ton of, a ton of value, and then get out. Much more open spaces here as well, so BQB has more opportunities to pressure Jinmu. However, if the Hunters control the points, then Jinmu can play from the back of this building. And he's going to start right now. The Hunters just sort of move straight in and say, okay, we want some presence here on the point. Here's a die from OG though. Bubble sort of forces a lot of the Hunters to play on the periphery for now. BQB here with a body grenade. Oh, he still gets Jinmu. He's clean with it. Nisha, resurrect. Jinmu's back in the fight and with Slime going down, it's looking rough here. Leave is sleeping. If they can do anything about this Tracer, they can't. The Florida Mayhem now have a numbers advantage, but they need to keep Gangnam Jim alive. Good bubble. That makes it hard for Elsa to find the honor. And there's a sleep. Eventually, Gangnam Jim falls. What a first fight. Elsa's going to go down here. And the numbers do favor the Mayhem, but these reinforcements are just going to trickle in. I mean, this is a real vivacity, a real passion for the game from both these rosters. They just don't stop. 
Oh, it's a Jinmu solo. You're going to get the kill here on the Nisha too. Is, uh, yeah, he's little style points off the side. Uh, we, we haven't really had an opportunity to talk a ton about off tanks uh, here in the main melee. Uh, Gargoyle, though, with his defense matrix there to end up keeping Gangnam Jin alive in the choke uh, on uh, Elso, and he's putting it down a ton of damage as uh, you see Gaga going around the outside there as Ball. Uh, taking a little bit of a scenic route, but you know, Gargoyle's D.Va has been fantastic, and we know what Gargoyle can do on you know heroes like the Sigma, but really, his diva has been, been awesome so far. And some of it's intangible as well, like how he kept Gangnam Jin alive for so long. That one, though, is clear. BQB just smacks Jinmu. Uh, and Nisha somehow finds a resurrect on Jinmu in the most unlikely of scenarios. Very Evil Tile esque. If you want a bit of a throwback to previous looks from this team. The Hunters, though, losing Jinmu early in that fight means that, I mean, the bulk of their damage is off the table for too long. Hello. And the Mayhem have had a chance to bank some ultimates. Crucially, OG and Gangnam Jin are ready to work in tandem or circus with each other, as that's what this is. When they're able to get the kills on a Jinmu early, uh, you pretty much get the kill on Anisha. This will be a dead eye. Uh, open things up as ooh, Monk is in trouble up here. <laughs> Trying to take out uh, yeah, in the one on one. Oh, gee, he'll deal with them. But we have a, a, a triple on the point for Jinmu. He's not done. I, I was going to say they've done such a good job of dealing with Jinmu, but uh, uh, right there, I mean. It, th is this going to be Yaki and, and OG just turning it? It'll be OG Primal Rage. Yaki gets one. So, uh, you just have Elsa here on the point now. Uh, I, I, El Elsa gets these. I mean, you got to pause the game. I, my head is just exploding right now. I don't even know if the server can handle so much data going back and forth. Jinmu finds two kills with the barrage and then a kill after the fact, plus a D suit on Gargoyle, who evidently. Wasn't able to prevent him from uh, doing some of that damage. Uh, thank God. I mean, I, I actually sent a message to Swing Chip. I said, look, you guys need to give me a break. I need like a half time break <laughs> now. So they just, they pause the game for I us. I need five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, pretty, pretty nutty stuff here. And you can see the difference uh, in impact from fight to fight of, you know, of when someone like Jinmu can really, can really shine here. And that pressure on Monk early, it's, it still might not have cost him the fight. Yeah, well it's, I mean, they're, they're able to get Monk on a flank. It's OG and Yaki, with Yaki working on the high ground, you know, pressures him out, and then he has to use a biotic grenade on himself to live, but then OG's waiting on the bottom. Uh, and you have Jinmu on the point who gets three, but then OG and Yaki just working their way back to the point, uh, able to take players out. As uh, see Florida Mayhem, uh, their, their room there in Hawaii. Uh, they are not on the beach, uh, as, no. as a, a lot of people... Uh, everybody I've spoken to is like, oh, I'm jealous. They're, they're, you know, they're in Hawaii. I mean, I'm sure it's great. Okay, I've listen. Been to I I was loved to, it, when I was had this explained to me, it was like they're gonna arrive off the plane, go straight to the hotel, go straight to the practice facility. I'm like, okay, that, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, I guess maybe it makes sense to, to leave me here in Orange County. And then I see these pictures of everyone at the beach, and I'm like, oh, okay, someone's been telling Porky <laughs> Pies. Next time we do this, put me on the plane. I'll sit in the baggage hold, mate. I don't care. Five hours, easy clap. Deep vein thrombosis, never heard of them. I'll go to Hawaii. Anyway, well, we're back we into this here. Now we go back to the game. Yeah, we don't we don't get to hear you ramble on about uh, <laughs> no, trying to sit in the, the luggage area. Really really adding value here, Matt, I know. Yeah, 90% of counting here, though, and the Hunters have to come up with something big here. They've got an EMP on the horizon. It's going to be hard, though. I mean, you just get OG, and that'll be a rally, as it's going to be Jinmu to get to the point to force OT. Uh, but who, who else is going to get there? Elsa barely makes it over the top. There is a self strike for Elsa, so that is a, a remake, potentially. But Nisha's already gone down, and Monk is, I mean, he is being pressured constantly. So hard for the Hunters to get that high throughput healing from the Arana when Monk is constantly occluded from the rest of his team. Pulse bomb there, didn't catch Elsa as he was the student, but still an easy pick up there. And the Florida Mayhem, it's their namesake. They live, they thrive in it. This absolute chaos is their wheelhouse. And they take this first map in what is sure to be a blockbuster series. And, and with Nisha pocketing Jinmu for so long and that far mercy combination, uh, he, he never had anybody to help keep Monk alive. And when uh, you have a Winston as talented as OG and a Tracer like Yaki, you need somebody to help, whether it's your your diva or the other support, uh, you know, peeling back, doing something. Uh, they just kind of left a monk out to dry there, uh, where I think you're going to, if you see this, like, aggressive style of play come forward again for the Florida Mayhem, you have to see adjustments from the Chengdu Hunters. Take a deep breath, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to need many of them over the course of this series, but right now it's the Mayhem who set their best foot forward early. Map two on the other side of this break. Saddle up, nerds. This one is going to be mental. Yeah. 
The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. IBM, the official cloud and AI partner of the Overwatch League. And by the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Go to takemetomanoa.org today. Welcome back, everybody. And yeah, I think this is a great time to give a special shout out to everybody over at the University of Hawaii at Manoa who are are frankly helping make this weekend possible at all. They've been incredibly gracious hosts to all of our staff who did travel to Hawaii this week. I'll be the next time, obviously. And without the help of the university and its eSports club, we wouldn't be able to, I mean, make a melee happen. A really ambitious project, I think, on all sides. So thank you, to, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone over at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. It's sick that we can do this. I, I, I haven't really heard of anything sort of similar like this. So big fan, big fan, thank you. Oh, Let's have a look at our... My school looked like that. I would have kept going. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, that was awesome. <laughs> so, so Kids, stay, stay in school for Christ's sake. Otherwise, you become you become the side man to a crazy Australian. <laughs> Here's your power rankings with IBM Watson. Uh, and yeah, like we mentioned at the start, um, I kind of stole the thunder from production. Uh, we just were talking about this though. OG and Gaga though, one and three respectively. And keep your eyes out because Gaga and Elsa are right down there at seven and eight. These two teams are intertwined in a dance of death before the game even began. Matthew. Yeah, I mean, uh, what well, both tanks for uh, both of the teams uh, within uh, your top 10. So you see how strong the tank line has been for the Chengdu Hunters. Like I mentioned, I think Elsa's play has always been uh, pr pretty solid. I think with Gaga and just some of the other pieces they've added to the team that are just quite frankly stronger than they've had in other years, I think you're going to see his play uh, go up. And then 
Uh, OG is a huge gift for the Florida Mayhem. Uh, we talked a ton about it on the uh, NA broadcast, but he's been fantastic. We do have subs coming in. Uh, we don't have one for the Florida Mayhem, like Johnny uh, pr predicted. Uh, we do have them, though, for the Chengdu Hunters. So uh, Jimmy will come in. Uh, this is where Jimmy comes in for Jinmu. He plays a lot of hit scan and stuff. Uh, and then Farway1987 comes in. So he plays a ton of the Zenyatta. So I fully expect them to see some type of uh, Zenyatta comps here. Uh, it, it, with the next map being Volskaya Industries, uh, you could see like those Zen break compositions with a Wrecking Ball, uh, maybe you know an Ash or a Widowmaker from Jimmy. Uh, would not be surprised if we see stuff like that come out. Yeah, this also gives you an Echo option um, as well, because quite often, um, well, Jimmy doesn't play a bunch of Echo. It's actually Lee that plays plays the yes. Echo. Oddly enough, you think that you know there's there's a lot of similarities between the two, the two heroes, a lot of parallels, but usually Jinmu gets subbed out and they have sort of the Echo playing with like a hit scan or even a Tracer sometimes, you know, if, if Jimmy wants to go that way. So that that's what's kind of unlocked here on Volskaya, and maybe that's no, that, no sort of huge surprise uh, to see those m changes made. I mean, have a look at this one. All time, by the way, back in 2019, Hunters versus Shanghai Dragons. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these teams were in very different places back then. Uh, but the Hunters never left the Chengdu zone, Matt. They have been, they, they've been there, and they've been that sat on their tods waiting for people to come to them. No, they, they have now. Uh, they, they've played a lot of uh, meta competitions uh, during this uh, tournament. They, they've looked really good at them, it seems. You know, it was never a question of the talent for Chengdu. Uh, quite frankly, I mean, uh, aiming on the ball, he couldn't really play the other tanks to that level that you need where Gaga can certainly sure. can. Well that and that's why they we still saw 18 come into the team last year and was unable to make his mark really against a really difficult Asia region. Uh, obviously Gaga provides a lot now. I mean we see him definitely on a lot of ball, a lot of Winston we even saw the Reinhardt from him though uh, on control center. He may have been made an example of by OG but I mean the hunters add a lot of flexibility to their pool here and yeah far away obviously it's a bit more of a cameo than, than anything else we don't often see a ton of stuff here but you hinted at this comp that we're already seeing kind of hovered right this um this, this zen uh mercy setup here and for the florida mayhem i mean we talk about it a bunch i think the bqb yaki combo they are a team that really loves playing this this ash and tracer setup here uh, and look at bqb can be kept safe which in many cases he is because he's a particularly survivable ash player then these guys should be golden and uh, um, if you haven't seen a ton of them play yet, I know Jimmy, at least in the games that I've seen, has really looked good on the hit scan. So I uh, fully expect him to give BQB a really tough go on the Ashes. Uh, we'll probably see Leave uh, play the Tracer, just the TP out of the spawn, uh, and then the, the Tracer swap. So uh, these compositions <laughs> will look like mirrors. Yeah, bear in mind, it's less about the Ash versus Ash in most cases, and it's more about each Ash versus the opposing Tracer. Because you'll see Lee and Yaki try and pressure these backlines hard. Uh, I will say where the uh, the Florida Mayhem may have an advantage in this is, you know, Gargoyle is oh. one of the... Oh, well, then it's going to be Gangnam Jin getting the first pick. Uh, Gargoyle's one of the best Sigmas that we have uh, in the, the whole league. He's really been uh, fantastic on the Sigma role, where... Uh, I wouldn't really put Elsa up there. I think Elsa's strongest hero definitely is his D.Va, but that's going to be far away taking out Gangnam Jin. So okay. The Zen's popping off here early on. Yeah, we live in a world where Resurrect is a thing, though. Go! But never mind. Just scratch that. Leave is going to go straight after Gangnam Jin the second he gets brought back. He was still glowing with that light, and he was taken down. BKB gets rid of Jimmy, though, but the Mayhem are running out of numbers, too. Gargoyle going down is pretty brutal, but the Mayhem have the numbers with both Elsa and Farway falling. They still have a Wrecking Ball in play, and OG's healthy enough to just go back for a health pack. If he's not body blocked here, Gaga slows him down. Mini picked up, but Leave chases and finishes the kill. Yaki, though, gets the better of him now, and these two teams, uh, they have no respect for the rules of engagement here at all. <laughs> Gaga knew what he was doing, Matt. He knew exactly what he was doing. He rolls right on top of Yaki's head. Where, Where is everybody else for the Florida Mayhem? They may have actually thought that they weren't actually going to be able to win that and start coming back straight away. As soon as Yaki picks those kills up, he's like, everybody get in there. What's going on? Is that now you're going to see OG come back and recontest? Jimmy takes a big hit of damage early, but Gangnam Jin going down to leave, <gasps> causing a lot of problems in the back line, suffice to say. Both Gargoyle and Gangnam Jim having fallen here, and the Mayhem just don't have the numbers. OG will try and stall it out for a little bit longer, but Farway is an absolute weapon on this Zenyatta, and the Hunters, it's a team full of them, Matt. 
and it, it, they ran the, uh, the lower third before, but the loss on Assault the other day for Chengdu was the first one that they've had all stage. Uh, so yep. they excel at this game mode. Is It'll be Chengdu looking to try and take the high ground here, uh, put Jimmy in a fantastic position, have the damage boost up there. Uh, you have the Discord, and then they'll have, they're going to have a ton of ultimates here. You know, they'll have the Gaga Minefield. That'll be Bob that comes out from BQB. Doesn't make it on the point contest, but uh, actually it's going to be the, the Discord on to leave a headshot. That's going to be two for BQB. And that pretty much ends anything that Chengdu was trying to get going. That was so deft there as well from OG. The, the shield from Elsa gets recalled for a split second, and BQB has already laid waste to the Hunters there. Nicely done, and great combination. This is what you fear from BQB. Very, very dangerous. Leave is also such a threat though, and BQB constantly checking this oh. periphery just in case the trace is lurking. It's, it's Bob. Valkyrie though from Nisha. They want to go in pretty quick here. It's, uh, it'll be the Bob use from Jimmy. Great flux. That's the point. It's going to be transcendent, so trying to keep them alive. That's a pulse bomb thrown in there as well. So Chengdu doing a nice job defending against some of this aggression from Florida. It was the time buy for the Flux, but even with all that time, the Mayhem haven't been able to do all that much with it. Yeah, they bring OG back into the fire, and here's another time buy right here. The Mayhem don't do much with this Transcendence to get a player advantage. Well, and they have to use it before the Gravitic Flux comes out from Elsa. So he'll, he'll use the oh! Flux, and he's going to get Gargoyle. That's a crucial lapse in judgment, the ult usage there. What choice do they have? BQB though playing from the side, a head headshot on Elsa gets rid of him. Nisha has to pay with his life for the Resurrect. It's a trade, if you will. Yaki's got himself into the back line, but Jimmy's still a threat. Any sort of stray headshot on close would be the death of him. And he gets a, 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 bio, a sorry a Harmony Orb now, is able to get back into the fight. This is kind of the same thing, though, that we saw really hurt the Hunters <laughs> in map number one. <laughs> Yaki just Sheesh! dancing here on the Tracer. Uh, they never... He, he is on fire. Right? <laughs> but they, they oh never God. actually... Uh, they, they never actually dealt with him on Lijing Tower. Like, some of those points got contested for so long. Uh, uh, because Yaki was just in the back line, just causing chaos. Uh, and the same with OG, and they never turned to really help. Uh, and we're seeing that again here, where Chengdu actually had an advantage in Ultimates towards the end there, uh, where they're able to get some out of Florida. But uh, Yaki just going into the back, just putting down so much damage, you're never actually able to nope. deal with them. The players get low over time. This time they do it, though. It's going to be Jimmy with a headshot. Yeah, that was Peepo leave, as he had to get out after not fighting much with the Pulse Bomb. Still, Jimmy has to be careful. Bob on the point right now. Two ticks and some for the Mayhem, and they pop the Valkyrie here. Crucially, they're very close to a Transcendence, but that's not going to bring BQB back. It has to be Slime to get the Ash back into the fray. But in doing so, they've lost Gargoyle. It'll be dueling Transcendence is on the point now. And those minefields can still buy some crucial targets. Yaki sticks Jimmy with the bomb, though. And now Earth is forced to back away left side of the point. Gargoyle is so low right now. And the Discord all makes life so hard for him. Gangnam Jin finds two, and Yaki's here for the cleanup. Still needs to respect the damage of this Echo, but he has effective healing and recall, and he gets the job done. <laughs> the Chengdu Hunters have gotten so close to taking this twice now, and it, it, it's Yaki able to turn the tides yet again. Is Chengdu now? They're they're in a world of trouble because, you know, a minute thirty on the clock. You don't have any ultimates here. Not really close to building up anything. You can't just kind of uh, sit around and let Elsa build up Flux. Your best case is to kick a fight off here quick, build some ultimates up during this, uh, and oh. then come back for one final fight. It feels bad, right? I mean, you can't, yeah, going well, for a junk fight here. Yeah, you can't, it's tough to make something happen with the pick because there's Mercy in the mix. Right, I mean, yeah, your other option is like what they're going to do here and, and, you know, Elsa sit on the high ground. Uh, with Farway, with Jimmy, try and They're work not for a pick, ults. but they can't see you anything. Don't have to, yeah, and you don't have to fight this if you're the Florida Mayhem. Leave here was going to force some action on the point. Gangnam's in pressure. Leave gets involved. What the heck was that? He gets someone on the high ground. Classy stuff. BQB descends. Leave has to now recall, but he's going to pulse from ready to go. The Gravitic Flux. Is there any value here? Gargo and Elsa go very, very low, but there'll be a Wrecking Ball Minefield on the point now. Leaves down to the Dynamite. Yaki, Pulse Bomb connection. It's another. It's BQB and Yaki making it happen. Two big bodies on the point, but the Mayhem have enough gumption to work through them, and they do. One last chance for the Hunters. Not much left to work with. And it's something BQB does so well that we've talked about, but dealing with these Tracers and Sombras and just Flankers in general, he actually forces the recall out of leave and then lands the dynamite in a shot onto leave and he and he doesn't have recall. Goes to the health pack, it's not there, he ends up dying and then Yaki able He's to get playing with two, a wrecking ball! 
You can't expect the health packs to be there. If somebody's got a touch here for Chengdu. It'll be Gaga against oh, barely on the what? Hook. What? Oh, Yankee gets hit with a Discord orb and randomly is run into by Gaga. It's like butterfly effect level stuff. Farway gets brought back into the fight after OG found him and goes down again. That's annoying. Rest into a minefield. That's some Groundhog Day stuff. BQB barely alive, but Lee can't find the kill, can't find purchase, and the Hunters here, they don't have the dollars to make the buy. Nisha down, Gargoyle connects with that accretion there, and OG knows it is done. Yaki eats his own pulse bomb for extra nutrients, and the Mayhem are in good shape. I mean, what? <laughs> uh, Gaga just trying to get there to contest. Uh, ends up just uh, casually just taking out BQB, uh, yes. Yaki on the it's way. Like it's you like the ISS. It's, it's like the International Space Station hitting a hummingbird. That's probably what it was like. I was just rolling through, just the utter girth of the man, and doesn't realize he's just <laughs> trod on poor Yaki underfoot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yaki probably thought he was getting back to the team, but you know, y Yaki just spamming the <laughs> I need healing as he typically does whenever we're on with him. Yeah, um, yeah. Working his way back, uh, mm -hmm. ends up getting getting dump trucked by Gaga. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, so, it, although the Chengdu, do, uh, Chengdu doesn't take both points, uh, it's still, you know, 93%. Uh, oh, uh, pretty decent nice. for Chengdu. Uh, this is a composition that we oh, have seen Chengdu, it's Chengdu play. Comp. It's the assault uh, comp for Chengdu. Yep, so you, you have the Orisa uh, ball combination. <laughs> uh, which, uh, so, so you can play, it, it's almost, it, it's kind of like playing the, the Sigma, obviously. Uh, Sigma, obviously more versatile than the Arisa. Uh, Arisa, obviously extremely stationary. But you can set up some cool things with, uh, you know, Halt with the Pile Driver, with the Dynamite, uh, the Discord Orbs, Volleys, uh, Pulse Bombs. A lot you can do with Halt. Okay. Now, against Dallas, this didn't work well for the Hunters on Temple of Anubis because they kind of went over the top of a lot of this action with, like, this Echo setup. With Jimmy here on the Ash, there's still, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to play Echo against this, I feel. Elsa, I mean, I, the ball's kind of an off tank in uh. this setup. I think that was how it was explained by Sideshow. And that means Elsa now has to essentially be that pivot point here in the front line. Uh, OG and Yaki have done such a great job, though. Uh, we, we don't see it on the, on the screen, but they've actually... They, they, Got enough damage on the leave where he couldn't contest that left-hand side, and they made it all the way around. Yaki's actually on the high ground behind the Chengdu Hunters right now. Oh, <laughs> Nisha! Yeah, absolutely suplex there. BGB gonna go down to the Jimmy though, and Gaga's at least able to trade there. Pile driver kills on back lines galore, but Yaki, he's hungry! Getting some of that grilled chicken, baby! This may well be the translation. When he is fighting up here on this, uh, when they're all fighting on the point, as he gets a stick on the Gaga there what? towards the end, when everybody's fighting on the, the point and playing at that choke originally with Elsa, you now Gaga is going in and putting pressure onto Slime and Gangnam Jin. Slime just kind of pockets him the entire time. They had Leave trying to watch that left hand side. Uh, and typically, sometimes you just send the tracer. They send the tracer in the ball there. Leave got so low, had to work back towards the Mercy. But that allowed OG to start, you know, rolling around, you know, putting some pressure over by the Mega Health back. But then Yaki was able to go undetected all the way towards that top high ground. And, and en enough just kind of pressure, right, where they're they're dealing with players from both directions, the Chengdu Hunters, uh, not enough to hold on defense. It feels like a Metal Gear Solid stealth mission. Like, if you get past Elsa, just put a cardboard box over your head and no one's going to really see you coming. Such a static front line here for the Hunters, that that kind of mobility makes it a little bit hard for them to challenge him. Gaga is... Well, if you wanted I to do know. that, you would just play Sombra and be invisible. Uh, so that, that, that's true. A little bit better yeah. than the cardboard box. Ah, <laughs> Spoken like somebody may not play Metal Gear Solid because it's pretty damn effective <laughs> in that game. BQB here just wants to play from this low room. I mean, this is the mayhem. They set up around the Mega in a pretty safe spot until the whole room is full of mines. And maybe it's not exactly the destination number one on Airbnb. Either way, here comes the Wrecking Ball Pile Driver. Elsa has to back up. He's going to use that Fortify pretty early, and that means the Gravitic Flux catches the Battle Cow. Okay, good response, though. There is going to be a Transcendence in play. It's an overlapping of support ultimates here, but do the Chengdu Hunters need everything to stay in this fight? BQB falls to Gaga, who just found Gangnam Jin and BQB, respectively. How long can he hold on for? Nisha goes down here, and the Aris is so hard to shift here in a shorthanded fight, but Yaki gets there. Both tanks fall. He's shredding through them. Slime is being allowed to get this resurrection wrecked off. 
and that is egregious. The hunt is here. Have to try and get back for a little bit of stall. It is full desperation mode. All gas, no breaks for the hunters here. Getting rid of slime is huge. No resurrect, but Gangnam Jin returns the favor. Two boop kills. And Yaki finds that supercharger. Numbers still favor the mayhem for now, but Leave comes in on the Widowmaker and gets rid of BQB. We're still getting ticks here, and that'll almost be enough. Recall, is there enough time? No. The mayhem get it done here. Two absolutely insane maps. It's a 2-0 for Florida. Talk about riding the lightning to victory so uh, far. And if they do not come up with an answer, Chengdu, for OG and Yaki, th this is going to be a quick series. Uh, they have they have absolutely dominated these first two maps. Uh, being able to... Yaki on the Tracer has been able to go into uh, any space he wants, whether he's you know, dueling leave, going into the back line, not contested at all. If you leave Yaki in a position like that, he's going to rip you apart. Uh, you're going to have to see them adjust in some way coming up next, Chengdu. Because uh, with the way Yaki and OG are playing, they're on fire right now. Uh, and, and they need to stop them. Spirits are high here in the Florida Mayhem facility. Out the window, of course, a nice view. And in their mind's eye, a view of that Mayhem melee trophy. Still theirs to claim, especially if they can take this next map. It's the Hunters on the Ropes coming into map number three. Stick around and see how this series ends. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. And by Xfinity, the preferred internet provider of the Overwatch League. Alright, so we get ready for the Pringles Live segment in three, two, one, go Zoe. Welcome back everyone. It is now time for our Pringles Bold Predictions. Danny, what you got for us? Scorch and chili and lime. Danny. Ooh, pizza. <clears throat> Danny. Danny? Ooh, on ranch. Danny. Barbecue on jalapeno on honey mustard. Danny. Stacked on top of all the Pringles. Stacked on top of all the Pringles. Stacked on top of Pringles. Perfect. Great job, everyone. Pringles, stay in the game. 
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles. Stay in the game. And by NetApp, the official data management partner of the Overwatch League. To celebrate the first tournament of the season, the one you're watching right now, we're excited to release a skin that captures the fighting spirit of the competition, MMA. Now, if this was capturing the essence of this game, she'd be just covered in bruises and just battered. But, you know, she's obviously doled herself up a little bit more for the skin. Uh, so, yeah, get it while it's on sale now through May 11 for 200 tokens. 200, chat. You should, uh, if you've been watching this, uh, you should probably have that by now. You'd be good. If you yeah. Get cracking, nerds! Limited time! And my god, I mean, we're going to miss this series when it's gone, Matt, and it may be gone quicker than we'd hope. You kind of tease this before the break. So this series is going to be over pretty quickly if the Hunters don't come up with something. So how about this? How about how about subbing in the Chad Mountain himself? Yeah, so the, they keep Jimmy in, uh, you keep Farway in, and now we have Eamon who comes in for Gaga, which it is odd uh, from the sense that this just tells you they want to double down on the ball comps, but they've but they've been losing on these compositions, uh, you know, with OG and Yaki playing really well. You take a look at uh, Aiming's player resume uh, by Indeed. Is, uh, he's a two-time All-Star, uh, and obviously his stats on Wrecking Ball are fantastic because uh, he, he was just playing a ton, right? I mean, uh, it was the only thing we really saw him play. We saw him incorporate uh, some Winston. I know we had a moment in time, I think, where he played the uh, the Reinhardt against the Titans when Bumper was there, and uh, that, that kind of spawned the whole yeah the the Amen uh, Giga Chad thing. So yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they play something else. But if you were gonna play something else, you would keep in Gaga. He's I'm he, sorry, he's been if, really good. There's a world where if you're on the ropes here, you know what I mean. It's like a rocky feel. I, I, like you know, you're gonna light a candle uh, at, at the foot of Mount Olympus, and you're gonna pray that your God comes to deliver you from certain uh, demise. And lo, he hath answered, Matthew. Yeah, uh, uh, and I feel like with uh, Chengdu this far, it's obviously you see the Florida Mayhem up 2-0 in the series. We go to Blizzard World, this is Chengdu's pick again. Uh, I feel like the, the, like if you were to say like, oh, well, what's going wrong? Like, you know, I, I wouldn't have said like, Gaga is, is kind of, uh, you know, not playing well. They just haven't done anything to help protect the supports, whether it's, uh, you know, Nisha, whether it was Monk in map number one. Uh, but is that on Elsa? Map far away. Like, like who's that on? Uh, I mean, I mean, what are you what are you supposed to do when you're playing Ball Arisa? How do you, and, and your supports are up on the high ground. How do you protect them from Ball Tracer? Like, and, and they're playing a D.Va, uh, and a, it's just... So there's no mechanism to deal I mean, with or, or even when all, they're playing right. a Sigma. Yeah, I mean... Unless it's, the ball comes back and tries to take responsibility for that, but that doesn't really, that seems like counterintuitive to what the ball's trying to do. They're trying to be disruptive, pressure back lines instead of babysitting their own. Yeah, uh, so we'll see what they decide to play here. Chengdu, I, I fully expect them to yeah just keep committing to these uh, wrecking ball compositions. And, and if you're the Florida Mayhem, as soon as you see the substitution come in, you exactly know what's going to happen. Uh, they, they wouldn't be subbing an Eamon uh, to come play, uh, you know, Reinhardt. They wouldn't be taking out uh, Gaga to, to bring an Eamon to play, like, uh, you know, even Winston, right? It really only has to be the ball. But even then, like, you know, Gaga's ball is very highly rated. Uh, you, you, one of the best in the, the league thus far. Uh, I think it's really, it's it's not a, a, a player situation. I think it's just some of the comps. But we'll see if, uh, see if I'm wrong with that. As, uh, it'll be uh, Ball Sigma. Uh, with the Zenyatta for both teams. Uh, this will be Leave probably making a switch to Tracer. Yup, so the, the mirror compositions yet again. And again, the question is going to be, what does Elsa do now? Obviously, not on the Arisa as before, as it just wouldn't make any sense here. So you'll be able to see the Sigma actually do more to protect the rest of the team. But look at his attention. Amon, uh, quite, the, uh, quite the welcome I think he's received here from the Mayhem. Very quickly staved Somebody off. get me some healing. So the Discord orb straight away, a ton of damage. Is there's four players for Chengdu uh, working their way towards the point, and, and they're and uh, the Florida Mayhem not even thinking about taking that fight. They're actually trying to deal with the Leave on the other side. They're not able to do so. Leave actually, you know, makes a huge play getting Gangnam Jin. And, uh, this may result in two ticks. I mean, BKB completely forced out of line of sight. It takes a headshot, I think, from Jimmy, and it's just so boomed he doesn't even want to play on the point anymore. 
Gargoyle also needs to be very, very careful. Look at this. Quite uh, quite ballsy there. Slime goes across the point to get the res, or the heal rather. And both Wrecking Balls have gone down now. How does Yaki salvage his fight? He's midway through the fight. He's going to come in late. People won't be looking at him yet, but he immediately gets a Discord Orb from Farway. Immediately recalls, but that's when BQB comes alive. Farway, I mean, those are both headshots. Those are con consecutive hits from BQB. And they still want to fight this. That's going to be the Bob all the way through. Nisha's going to get a res on far away. The Bob isn't in a spot to contest the point, though, as uh, Gangnam Jin deals with uh, Jimmy's Bob. And now it'll be the Bob from the uh, BQB. Used to just kind of look across the point there. Again, BQB. Again, another headshot on to leave. That's not expected of you. You're just really not expected to be able to shut down a Tracer like that. You play the Tracer because she's hard for Ash to kill like that. And yet, surpassing expectations is BQB. I think the DPS player on this team that gets much less accolades, much less hype around him because he's very consistent. He's low economy and yet stuff like that. I mean, you can't count on it, but here he is delivering it. Yeah, he's just not as flashy as Yaki, right? I mean, you go sure. on with Yaki, you fully expect to see like the highlight reel plays, right? The, the ones that end up in a lot of our packages, but uh, BQB is just rock solid as most I mean, of the mayhem playing the point. Yeah. He's taking a gigantic steaming bite out of the hunters right now. Every time someone steps up towards him, he is there. He's okay, so here's the minefield on the point. That's Amon's by the way. That's why Gargoyle takes an absolute schlacking as he tries to get on the point. The transcendence! Oh! Oh my god! Saving private Gargoyle. Gundam gets there. Gundam did sorry, gets there just in time. And it's Gargoyle that gets rid of Amon who overextends to try and find the kill on the Sigma. That is so big. Again, by the way, leave dead to BQB, who is just unstoppable right now. And Yaki's just flexing, just stretching some quick squats as he gets ready for the next fight. And it's one of the same combos that the Florida Mayhem used on Volskaya. They were actually playing the point there. They knew that the pressure was going to come in from Chengdu rather quickly because they had the minefield. They know that the way that Chengdu played the, on uh, Volskaya, they tried to use, and even on Li Sheng Tower, remember when Gaga used the minefield to try and take the point? They knew that that type of play was going to come in. But a uh, Gravitic Flux from Gargoyle, and then OG drops the minefield right underneath it. Just so much damage. But, uh, they do not know where Yaki is. I mean, look at this. How, how is he supposed to live? I mean, yeah, there's not a chance. Took a while, but Yaki gets the job done. Pulse Bomb doesn't find the kill, and somehow oh, Nisu kept Elsa. Oh, oh Yaki actually, he, he, that, is so, that is so big brain. He actually, he, he knew that Elsa he was the, backing he up towards the, the health pack. He stole the yep. pack at the final second. Jimmy, though, gets the headshot kill and leaves found two consecutive. Gargoyle going, going down to the Pulse Bomb here. In the Battle of the Traces, Leave finally comes out on top in that fight. Gives the Hunters a chance at this. Uh, it's just, uh, okay, BQB, I was going to say, I was like, there's no way he's locking the legs. It's uh, <laughs> it just to try and potentially get back to the point. Elsa will switch back to Sigma, so this is really all going to be about high ground control for the Florida Mayhem. Uh, Ken Gargoyle gets it up here with BQB, and BQB up on the high ground is going to be difficult for Jimmy to deal with. How do they go about trying to get that high ground? So Jimmy plays like a, a real peripheral angle here. Not looking for the Ash 1v1, just trying to benefit from the Sigma shield and get the shield pressure himself. He has Bob, so uh, maybe he's hoping that the, the Mayhem are prompted to start a fight on the low ground, but that was a salvo from Gangnam Jin that keeps Jimmy honest. Yeah, they know that OG has to have minefield, so they don't want to play completely out in the open by the car. Everybody pretty spread out now for the Chengdu Hunters. It's a bobbin from the high ground comes in here from Jimmy, so this is going to try and get them the payload progress underneath the bridge, which they're getting right now. Yeah, it works. It, it buys them enough space here. Now the Mayhem are in a worse spot. They can't go up to the high ground just yet because the mines are still persisting. They'll eventually despawn, but that buys a decent amount of time for Chunky. Look, they're still there. It's so annoying. Yaki, though, makes his way back up. BQB looks uncontested right now. Leaves it with a Discord Orbit, is fighting elsewhere, so Bob gets sent down. I mean, it's just a drive-by for Amon here, really. BQB scratches up the paint. Insurance will cover it, surely. And there's the payload. It's inches from that next checkpoint, but the Hunters aren't as close as they seem. There's a lot of work to be done here. And getting rid of Gangnam Jim is definitely number one on that list. As they park him, trying to keep him alive. Transcendence for both teams. So it was uh, the Florida Mayhem holding onto their Valkyrie a little bit longer, allowing them to stay pretty healthy throughout this fight. As 
It was Nisha using it really early on, and when they used it, Florida just backed up. There really wasn't anything going on in the fight. Oh, Slime gosh. was able to use that Valkyrie to great effect. I mean, you see Yaki just... Oh, no! The chat is returned! He descends from the, the mountains of Olympus to blessing There's his father no. Zeus, and he just ends them! <laughs> He's just ending careers! Oh, oh this, my this weekend, god! Uh, this that would have been it, man! Everything going on. That would have been <laughs> it! I mean, look at this thing now. The, the, the <laughs> Chengdu Hunters are spawning here. Everybody on the Florida Mayhem is playing up on this high ground. <laughs> like the point two defense. <laughs> Because uh, back at Leave is, Leave is now on Widowmaker to try and clear these players out. As, uh, how are you going to clear out with Tracer? They're just playing around the corners. There's no way you're not angry. You're this furious about this. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy, Bob, somehow... Bob from both teams, uh, Bob the Contest here for Florida. <laughs> Is Elsa using the gravity, uh, the kinetic grasp in front of the Bob to soak up the damage so he could get the cart moving? What a game. I mean, this, this is as close wild. to Berserk as I've ever seen any team go. They have just lost all awareness of where they are right now. And they're What's just going mental. Is, uh, uh, so, obviously, uh, I, I have the, the caster feed that we use, but then I also have the, the luxury of having the, uh, the mini map. And, and the back half was so fast. Like, like Eamon just kind of rolls out. That does one of these wrecking ball rollouts. Wrong with Yaki. He picks up two kills. Everybody from Florida just kind of standing around. He rolls directly <laughs> to the car. Not even, no, no, no questions asked. Rolls directly to the car. Just rolls the car in. I mean, there was no, like, there's no sneaking around. He's just, just a fast drive by. And, no uh, cardboard boxes about, uh, needed. Unbelievable. No. But but get this, it took them so long to get back to the payload because tremendously positioned from the Florida Mayhem on the high ground. That that well at uh, twenty seconds left already here. I mean yeah, Yaki, how mad are you? Pulse bomb is evaded by Jimmy so far. Now looking for that trace ahead. Tough to pluck and OG catches him by surprise, he backs up into a mine. Who put that there, Jimmy asks. He's brought back into the fight now and Gangnam Jim is in deep trouble. Yeah, he's done. Amon, one HP on the card, BQB clears him up. And this is a lot of good zone control for the Mayhem, but they're lacking on players. Gargoyle can't be pocketed enough here by Slime, who's the only support on the battlefield right now. He has to back up as well, and Hunters, through a divine intervention, an opportunity granted by the deity that is Amon, have a chance of finishing the map here. Bobby's down, leave a little low, but that's a recall force from Yaki already. Elsa out of the picture is a bit rough here. The Mayhem have the ability to make it work. BQB pretty uncontested right now. Yeah, he gets leave. Another headshot's ridiculous. Jimmy reciprocates though. Gets a kill on Yaki, keeps the Hunters in it. Here's a Valkyrie from Nisha, a resurrect to bring Leave back. Jimmy goes down again, but still it's Amon and Nisha. He's in the fight. Leave also gets rid of Slime, and the numbers are with Chongdu right now. Oji's got to come back to the cart and try to see the go, but here's Yaki. He's the king of overtimes right now. Minefield, no one moving into it though. Very clever stuff. They really avoid that quite well, the Hunters. And now here comes Gargoyle. Nighttime, apparently, he can spring to life. Amon's just going to sit on the card here. Pile driver, the mini diva, so she can't stay alive any longer. Yaki, you can see that healing from Slime constantly making the tracer hard to get rid of. But BQB goes down elsewhere, and this is definitely over now. The Hunters have the numbers in the most unlikely scenario. The death-defying pandas. Oh, man. Just ridiculous. That was, uh, that was vintage Chengdu. I mean, that was crazy. Uh, they, they're able to back up. Then they have to play out of the, the second point spawn, but they're not able to make their way back to the cart because the, it just, it, it would have been great positioning for the Florida Mayhem if the cart didn't get all the way to the second point. It was fantastic because he just turned around. Uh, yeah, it, it, check this out. Yeah, just roll they, around. They, they see up. me rolling, they hate him. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Oh, yeah, the streets is real, Mayhem. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I would love to see that again. How he just takes it, and then as soon as he g gets to the point, he just rolls the opposite way. Just, just going back to where he came from. So, uh, they, they do complete the map. Uh, you know, it's uh, they bring in Eamon. Uh, a, a little bit surprising. Do not, I don't think uh, either of us would have said Gaga was uh, playing bad on the ball. I actually thought sure. it was kind of more in the, the compositions, but you know, maybe bringing in Naaman gives uh, you know, a little bit of life here to Chengdu, and he's he's your ball he's your ball player only, right? I mean, that's all he's going to play. So they, they now go back to the ball Arissa. <laughs> okay, all right. You have my attention.
I wonder how... Yeah, okay, so again, like we mentioned, this is easier for Yaki to circumvent. The question is, does Leaf stay at home and, and sort of do housework <laughs> and defend, they, or does he go off to work and try and earn a living? That's the question. If they, if they force him off of the high ground, like El Elsa rotating with the Zen and the, uh, the Mercy, it's just so slow. Uh, They, they already have to give up the high ground. OG just rolls to the left, gets to the point. They just give up give the high ground completely. So, on far way, is split off on his own. Yaki's gonna. So this is where this Yaki, way, yeah, gets some action, right? Surely. How far around does he wrap? Not. Uh, no, not Yaki's clear to us right here. Car driver slime somehow stays alive. And yeah, we're on board with the the man who really is the linchpin here. Jimmy, big finish. Big finish. Force the resurrect on Gargoyle. Slime can't be punished. Yeah! Oh my Ooh. god! He wasn't even <laughs> aiming at him! That is astounding! Uh. BQB's able to find the headshot though. Just okay, buddy. Whatever you say. Didn't know we had a Hanzo main in the server. And that is the Ooh. stuff we've seen from Jimmy though. I mean, the, uh, his aim is real clean. Is uh, You lose aim and now you don't have a res. Uh, you just use the res on Jimmy. So. You're going to have OG back in the fight rather quickly. This could be pretty bad for Chengdu. They have to keep Elsa alive on the point. Here comes OG swinging in. Little bit of a mistake there. He gets to the point one way or another. And there it is. Yaki eventually finds what he was looking for, Matt. A long journey to be sure, but he gets that kill. BQB going to be able to coach gun away from the pile driver and tries to predict the recall location of leave there. Doesn't quite work out. Elsa has been hard to topple so far in this round. Anyone who's tried cow tipping should probably not be surprised by that. The BQB is still in position. The Bob is in an odd the spot is here. What, what is this Bob? Uh, are you it it controls the flank. Uh, it's supposed to, I guess, keep lead quiet. Like and then we have a Bob I mean... down here as well. It, that, that is not a Bob to control the flank. I mean, that is one that I, I don't expect that that's where he intended the Bob to go. I mean, down there on the stairs. This is now starting to look increasingly dire for the Florida Mayhem. That is... Uh, well, that's what happens when you throw a good bob after bad, I suppose. BQB loses that ultimate. There's no key support ultimates online, and Farway sits back knowing he has a transcendence available. Unlikely that we're going to really see this pressured out in a big way, so theoretically the Hunters can probably weather the storm in his next fight. With the way with the way that Farway is playing, you know, it's so much out on like an island that if, if Yaki or OG gets back there, especially OG getting the, the minefield now, they could force this transcendence out. Uh, they're really leaving far away alone to play, and now it's now this is where you know, him playing out on that island uh, it, it worries you because you know, Nisha can't go and get the res. Uh, as, uh, Jimmy's able to just do a headshot on the Yaki. Uh, okay, immediately, Yaki just barks yep. orders to his right. Give me the resurrect now. Uh, OG though gets right on top of far away and just drops the minefield, and he has to transcendence. Uh, and they're not even able to get it to the point to save Elsa. So. Like I was talking about, he's playing so far out, uh, you know, almost in that choke. And, and Nisha's so far away, and he has to heal the rest of the team. That when far away, uh, it takes any type of damage, you know, Nisha's going back to him. They don't have any healing for anybody else. Uh, and that's how you end up losing else on the board there. So it's a prediction on how uh, far away was sort of forced to part with that transcendence prematurely. We kind of thought that would be what would hold things together for the Hunters in that fight, but I think le losing Leave so early set them on a bit of a wonky trajectory. It almost happened again. Leave has to recall, and they lose Aim on a lot of front loader damage here from the Mayhem. A lot of poke as well. There was no way he was living through that. And he rolled in, got discorded, and everybody was there. Uh, he's going to get back in the fight, though. I mean, by the time we have a next one kick off. Gravitic. Avoiding Elsa, who will just go golden and avoid that. Oh! Oh! Okay, almost enough damage there, I thought, to uh, to get rid of Jimmy, but not quite. Far away finds the headshot! That is nasty stuff from Leave. A brilliant little double pulse bomb kill now, and but the Hunters are back in control. Look at how effective it is, though, when the, the Hunters are able to keep far away alive. Uh, it, his Zen. He's been able to find a first a blood in a few of these fights. Uh, being able to give him that space and prevent Yaki from just going in, getting, you know, the, the one, two kills, taking out both I mean, supports in a lot of fights like we saw in Valskaya, it, it's a huge difference in the game. I mean, Matt, if the Atlanta Rain were able to set Dogman up to play that aggressively, he would be hosting a talk show right now. That is exactly what you want to see. 
for an aggressive Zenyatta. I mean, having your Orisha shield is kind of handy, I'll, I'll, I'll wager. There's B BQB, down to the bomb. Transcendence used here maybe just to set up the res. I mean, what a position to use that in. And they go to far way elsewhere. OG goes abroad and finds a, a crucial kill on the Zen. They're going to be able to res this though. Uh, so you're going to be back at full strength pretty much for Chengdu as you're without your Wrecking Ball here for the Florida Mayhem. You're without your Engage. Just, uh, the, the Pole Spot will connect on to Eamon, but he just rolls right in the Aki. Takes him out, the minefield there, so can not have everybody push up to the high ground. The Resurrect is not quite off cooldown yet. So, okay, it is just in time. So Yaki almost ended up in spawn. So it'll save a couple of seconds here, but the Mayhem don't have many of those to spare. They're under a minute left in the round now. Barb is on the scene once more. Okay, Power Driver, again, another forced Transcendence from Farway, but they've already lost Elsa again. Farway being forced to play in a very suboptimal manner here. Elsa's back in the fight, but then they lose Amon. The Hunters can't keep five, six players up to save their lives. Literally. Here comes Gargoyle rolling straight through on the low ground, and that card's getting awful close. And now the Hunters look like they're in disarray. And the Florida Mayhem invests so much there to try and take that high ground. They end up throwing the Bob up on it. Jimmy able to get one supercharger in here for Elsa underneath, but I, I don't think it'll be enough as uh, he'll end up getting taken out. You still may need one more fight though here if you're the Florida Mayhem. You have Eamon behind enemy lines. He's going to be able to get onto the cart and contest. Okay, uh, he's down. So yeah, Transcendent, I guess, Orb of Discord there applied pretty darn quickly and the Mayhem get to play more of the map, but this might be... I mean, we had, we've had a feel of map sixes, but uh, it's possible. We'll say that. OG gets hit with an accretion early on, still charges in. Another BQB kill on Jimmy. The hit, the, I mean, the hitscan DPS players in this map alongside the Zens are just absolutely lethal. Okay, <laughs> how do you have time to do that? You just drop the twinings? You've got a minute left in this round. <laughs> I love that Yaki always time, makes time yeah. for the important things, you know what I mean? Love it. Oh, yeah. they, they put enough damage down, and, and that'll clear in the res. The cart's still not really moving that far. So. I mean, you can't play this way and have three on the cart. It's just not possible. No. But look at this for Florida. Six ultimates coming into this. I mean, they're in a position to potentially finish with maybe a sliver of time. Quite the cash to be sitting on, but BQB can't stop. Okay, Gangnam Jin. That might just be to facilitate a resurrect here, but you can still interrupt. Slide the clock, Misha. Woke up today and chose violence. And well, I mean, BQB didn't wake up at all. I guess that's the way it goes. OG down, and now we're running out of time. It's 19 seconds in the round, and the Mayhem are starting to use the ultimates pretty poorly. See, so had six coming into that fight. So OG will go over to Winston. Oh, big win there. Discord on Tiaki, and then leave. Takes him out. So you may have a Bob here to contest, and then a Valkyrie. Bob comes out. He, I think he was body blocked. I think Amon actually prevented Bob from getting out of the door. They wanted to send him with the cart. I don't think he was able to get that far. BQB goes down to Jimmy anyway. He's resurrected. Here's a pulse. Okay, Yaki just spots Leave recalling. Knows there's a window where he can actually really pressure. I mean, yeah, Leave. you thought he'd play a little bit more passive, uh, you know, in light of that fact, and he doesn't. Yaki's Leave really it. going for a flank here. Leave is doing much better, though, taking these one-on-ones, not letting Yaki just get in for free. Gravitic Flux. Amon not caught in that one. Gargoyle, though, did get caught. He's flung Skyward. OG goes down here and the Hunters. Okay, this looks like it's going to be their map indeed. Lee takes it to another level and the Hunters dig those heels in and stay alive. This series is going to at least go to four and by God, we deserve more. Fantastic stuff from Chengdu. They stay in it. And they're able to sub in him and he makes a difference playing the ball. Uh, a and difference? I think, he it, saved the series. He, he really That's did. That's an understatement. I mean, with the back, the back cap, I mean, is just insane. Uh, but I think Leave, though, being able to take these Tracer one-on-ones, you know, really putting, a th making Yaki feel like he's threatened, uh, really was a huge difference maker. Uh, he here's something that Chengdu is going to have to deal with, though. This next pick from Florida, I, I highly doubt Florida's going to pick a map that facilitates these Wrecking Ball type of compositions. Which then, what do you do? Do you try and force it with Eamon? Do you take him out and put Gaga back in? Uh, I think that's kind of the predicament that Chengdu's in right here. Well, we'll see what decisions they make there in terms of personnel. They're still, whichever way you slice it, a good look for the Hunters. And they're in the running still. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. Map 4 is up after this break. Let's see where the Mayhem choose to take this battlefield. Stick around.
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Right, so a bit about Watchpoint Pride. So what is Watchpoint Pride? I woke up quite early on a Sunday morning and the literal first thought that popped into my head was why isn't there an LGBTQ plus content creator network for Overwatch? Hi, my name is Cameron, but most people know me as Oak. I head up everything here at Watchpoint Pride and I am, of course, a Mercy main. Hi, I am Nicole or Nika Todd, founder of Watchpoint Pride, and I am a Junkrat main. The goal of this network is to create a space where all of these creative people can get together, grow, but also spotlight the talent that is within our community. So much of our relationship is me messaging Nika at ungodly hours being like, I have this really good idea. And I'm like, how many Google Drives will I need to make? <laughs> Nika and I were working at how he wanted it to run and I was at my boyfriend's place and he sat down and penciled out a logo which was like this rocket with the pride colours as the flames coming out of the rocket and I think it was that moment where I was like oh no we're ready to launch now. For me cosplay is the sort of main thing I contribute to Overwatch League related content. My favourite cosplay for Overwatch is Tracer of course as you can see. For me content creation in Overwatch started with British Sign Language so I'm hard of hearing and for me sign language is my second language. So the first kind of videos that, that I kind of produced was me uh, showing the signs for the different heroes in Overwatch and the teams and really kindly some of the teams from League, London Spitfire, uh, uh, retweeted that and kind of my content got more out there. What initially drew me to Overwatch was the animated shorts that were released before the game even came out and I just loved everything about the art direction and how colourful it was, how unique the characters were and it just kind of sucked me in. Our Best Is Us is a great slogan because the league wouldn't be as big as it is without the fan base. It's about camaraderie and coming together and making friends and connections. Even though we maybe don't support the same things, getting together and talking about the league still brings out the best in us. The best is the members of our community shining and being happy and having a platform to express their creativity. Watchpoint Pride is a home to me. It's just a group of content creators where you can just be unashamedly yourself without fear of judgment feeling of the common ground, not just in a game we love, but who we are as people. And to me, Watchpoint Pride is my pride. If you're looking to get involved in Watchpoint Pride, then we'd love to hear from you. You can follow us on Twitter at Watchpoint Pride. Coming together to create, share and support each other is Watchpoint Pride. And our best is us. It's family, it's community, it's working together, and it's Watchpoint Pride. She's not good to a pretty face. Yeah, <laughs> that's us.
Well, sparks are flying in this matchup, and these two are your pieces of flint. Yaki and Leave on the tracer, sometimes dueling each other, but more often trying to outdo each other in terms of overall impact when they get into the enemy backline, Matt. What a head-to-head, -head, and that solo kill stat to me is really quite telling. I mean, Yaki was dominant the first two maps, uh, and I think Leave did a really good job there on Blizzard World. Uh, you subbed the name in to play the ball. He did make uh, some impact. He ended up, you know, back capping, which helped them uh, really <laughs> kind of just uh, snowball all the way to the final point. They lose. They but lose really if he doesn't like do that. Yes, they do. Uh, well, you, I mean, you don't know that. You don't know how it changes the rest of the game. But uh, definitely, probably throws the mental off of the Florida Mayhem a bit uh, as we move in, though. Uh, I fully expected this. The Florida Mayhem may pick a map where you don't really see ball comps get played here on Havana. Uh, a lot of Reinhardt, double bubble type of stuff. Uh, and the substitutions come in for Chengdu to reflect that. They leave Jimmy in because uh, you need the long range hit scan. So we haven't seen sure. Jinmu since map number one. Uh, but you do have Monk come in and you have Gaga come back in. Uh, so. We'll see if Chengdu can force this fifth and final map. Uh, they can get it to control. It, it, it's huge. I mean, that allows you to do a lot of different things if you're Chengdu. You can bring back Eamon to play a ball, get a ball map. You can uh, you know, bring back Jinmu uh, if you wanted. Uh, a lot of different options roster-wise for Chengdu if they can get there. So what I want to know is, does this Havana pick... Do, do Chengdu have to play a Reinhardt comp? A Reinhardt I mean, comp, well, sorry, on this what, map? What do you... You could play... Uh, you know, a Winston-based composition. Uh, we, we see a lot of teams hold close on defense. Really, Havana just eliminates Wrecking Ball. Uh, sure. It's it's a, a really poor map for Ball. Uh, so that's why the Florida Mayhem decided to pick this. You you had a distinct advantage when you were playing some other different types of things early on. Uh, you feel like you obviously still have that advantage. Uh, and they have to play something different. Uh, it'll be Chengdu that starts on defense. Currently, uh, this is a throwback. Double shield, double sniper. Uh, potentially here for the Chengdu Hunters. Uh, really, the first time we've seen Batiste uh, in the series. Uh, Didn't we see we, Dallas uh, play this? Like uh, with a Genji? Like a Rissa Genji setup on this map? It, it, they did. They played it was... Uh, yeah, well, I think we cast it. It was like a, they played like uh, Hanzo Genji, I think, uh, with an Arissa. Goodbye. Uh, I, I don't think you'll see anybody else do that outside of Dallas. Uh, <laughs> the double sniper is interesting, though. Uh, the fact this this could be actually pretty decent for the hunters. You know, Jimmy, like we've talked about, uh, very good on these hit scan rolls. 
All right, so the Hunters, they say, okay, we don't want to try and spawn camp, play close with May, Batiste set ups with the Reinhardt. Instead, we'll play some nasty, right. nasty Ooh, double sniper, oh and here it is. Yaki looking at the Genji's thinking, all right, well, time to get my hands dirty. So that was BQB trying to work through that side area. And then just a headshot that comes in from Leave, trying to halt accretion there. So. I'm afraid for BQB in this Widow matchup. Jimmy is unbelievably yeah. sharp. Very, very I don't very think he knows good. that BQB is hiding, though. Does he? No, he, he oh, knows, he yeah. That card is... lumbering forward. Not exactly snail's pace, but it's not exactly uh, a hot rod right now. Yaki, again, wants to poke from mid-range as long as he can, and there's a lot of shields to make. This look more like an AKM blade if he doesn't get involved a bit more. They just need to get in position to, like, get a halt, and, and he can get a dash through, dash maybe through, a reset. Yeah. yeah. Nisha, this is a great spot to be. He breaks line of sight by just using that little corner. There's the halt from Gaga. Yaki. <laughs> oh, my God, Leave is keep shooting. That's ridiculous. Storm arrows, by the way. Yeah, okay, you're, like you meant to hit that. Fair enough. Absolutely tearing the mayhem limb from limb right now. And Gangnam Jin is just, yeah, better give up, son. And these fights are so slow and, and drawn out with the, the, the Arisa sniper compositions that this could really go poorly for Florida rather quickly. Uh, you could have a supercharger to kick things off. Supercharger plus, you know, some storm arrows might be enough to get a fight win. You probably hold on to that Gravitic Flux. At least you would love to. Uh, for when uh, the Dragon Blade comes through. The Mayhem thought they'd be at a great favorable scenario here. I don't know if they expected to run into this composition. They are, mind you, Yaki, of course, functioning without Nano Boost here, and Genji's weak enough uh, even with that combo right now. Uh, and that was a Dragon Strike here. There, that yeah, and uh, yeah, Infraside also used uh, Gangnam Jin. Okay. Blocks too. Okay, he gets an immortality field down. That is removed, but it protects him from the flux. And here is the amplification matrix from the backside. They try and pull Gaga oh, out into the purview of Kang Nanjin, but there's Monk down. Vicky B finds the pick, Matt. Chengdu uses so many ultimates at the start of the fight, and they get absolutely nothing with it. They're going to use the ant matrix here at the end of the fight. This is just like Leave and, and <laughs> Jimmy and Monk in the back. Uh, it's, They're taking each other out. That went as poor as it could possibly go for Chengdu. Uh, they they use uh, the walls to buy them some time. Instead of just letting the time go by and then letting Florida like engage and then get a halt with a dragon, they try and use the dragon with the walls up without like yeah. any yeah with proactively without any halt. And well, then it's once they come in, they use the gravitic block straight away. It's just an immortality field and everybody lives. Uh, they, they don't have to use Rally, they don't have anything for the Blade. I mean, that is pretty poor there. OG got a huge hold, though. I mean, Leave had already, you know, used his Q, so we couldn't change where he was looking. And he was pulled to the left. So the Dragon is a bit easier to get away from if you're the uh, if you're the Mayhem. It's a really little thing, but I think it made it much harder. Here's the Blade, though. Immortality Field's been taken down. Yaki, can he get more than that, or is it just inanimate objects? No. He clips the angel's wings, and I don't think Elsa's getting away now. Yaki. Okay, a salute. And it's a warrior's death, is what it gives Jimmy. But that, if you're Chengdu, and you end up losing this map, you're going to go back and look at that. I mean, just regular everything that happened. I mean, you're in a spot where you, you, you get the, the walls, you get one halt combo with a dragon, you have the flux to combat the blade. You're in a position to win the map there. Uh, get, get a really good hold. Uh, as now you're in a lot of trouble. Gangnam Jin with the Ant Matrix. They want to play aggressive here. They can really stop them before they can get in. Amplification Matrix on one side, and Yaki is on the other, causing problems here. Jimmy gets taken down by BQB. Jimmy was looking for a way in on the bottom left-hand side, and that's more than enough to secure the fight and the point here for the Mayhem. I don't oh, understand the Gravitic Flux oh, that's interrupted by an accretion. Wow, talk about being caught between a rock and a hard what? place. Hey, is he going to switch? This is about as mad uh, as that gets, I mean, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't, uh, you can't do that. I mean, what's the, what is the like, reason? Yeah, 
you're in no position to turn that fight. You have Monk there uh, with Gaga and Elsa, and there's players coming out of the door. Like, what is best case scenario there? You kill two, and then you still can't push in. Uh, I mean, that is, uh, these are some ultimates that Chengdu would love to have back. I mean, uh, Yonki just gets up on the high ground, takes out leave. I mean, this is, uh, this is not going well for Chengdu. Gaga goes golden here. There's an, uh, okay, so interesting, Air Matrix, Pretty much unusable for the hunters as most of them have their feet taken off the ground. Yaki, does he look for a way in for the blade here? Getting rolled. Gaga can't get away. It's going to be an immortality field to keep him alive, but Yaki doesn't care. He cuts through that as well. Well, I guess memes don't melt steel beams, but they do melt this composition from the hunters. The mayhem using the Genji of all heroes, and Yaki. Not only looks at home, he looks extremely angry. He's challenging that, channeling that rather right uh now. At the hunt. And the Florida and the Florida man push all the way up to the spawn door. They know they can start blocking some of these players and the Chengdu hunters from making it out. They have a rally to work with, and that'll be supercharger dragon strike used to just get out of the spawn here. Yaki forced to dash skyward here, and Gargoyle can't get away from the Dragon Strike. Instead of passing to the right, he passed backwards and stays inside of the Dragon. An odd decision to be sure, maybe had very little choice, but the Hunters were able to burst from their spawn and get control once more. Yeah, he had no option there. Uh, it was a well-placed Dragon Strike that time from Leave. Uh, in the Immortality Field from Gangnam Jin, uh, gets taken out, wears off, not able to live through that anymore, so... And now Chengdu stabilized, and, and they did such a good job on the point one that there's not a ton of time here for Florida. Florida really ran through that first point. PQB visibly dodges Ugh. in real life there as that shot came through from Jimmy. I mean, tough job. You're up against two snipers here, and you need to at least he, trade these Yonki, kills. Yonki is going to go kill Jimmy. He's he's all the way behind. They have no clues there. Or okay, he's just the gonna move the car? He's 1 HP. 1 HP in a dream, Jimmy! Trying to gun it down! Oh my! The SMG's not enough! They're gonna make it back, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, Yaki can't <laughs> do right, this on right. his own. That was Faker versus Ryu Ooh. level stuff there. I, I tell you what. Nicely done by Yaki to win that out. Those really solid fundamentals. <laughs> Jimmy just trying to gat him. Uh, I tell you what though. If he went and assass like, assassinated Jimmy, Jimmy was sitting up at the high ground. They had no idea he was there. Uh, he may have had enough my time. Is ready. No one can hide from my sight. He may have pulled the back cap. A dragon strike there. No mortality field needed yet, which is just as well. Because six seconds are left in the round, and the mayhem oh. have to make some money moves here, Matthew. Gravitic flux. Oh dear, Yaki's again on the card. This time dealing with Nisha. Much less desirable an opponent as opposed to the Widow Maker, but he wins that one out anyway. Yaki unstoppable, one man army. But Big Brother OG comes to the rescue anyway. The Hunters are being ignored. Gaga can't believe that they're turning their back on him. But it's because the Mayhem have bigger fish to fry, bigger goals in mind, and the card is going to sail but home. Absolutely absurd. The, the Hunters 100% thought that Nishi was going to be able to just deal with Yaki alone on the cart. Because everybody else was just pushed up playing at the choke. Uh, the Batiste is up in the, like, the high tower area. Gaga is playing in the, the street. Jimmy's just looking straight down, trying to find shots. Uh, they thought that Nisha was going to be able to deal with it. And I actually was uh, really impressed with Nisha right before that because Yaki makes two attempts to try and get in that same back cap uh, flank. And Nisha hits two whip shots back to back, knew exactly where he was going to be coming from. And Yaki still gets to the spot, still wins the battle. So that is uh, a huge play there from Yaki again. It's really a playmaker's meta right now, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yaki, I mean, he has to win those 1v1s. And, and he's not in a situation where he can be healed. He relies on the odd health pack here, but really it's just white knuckling that M1. I, mean, I think it was it was a right click <laughs> and like triple headshot on the brig that lets him yeah. get that kill. He, 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 I mean, if you, if brig versus Genji, you like the brig uh, a lot of the time. Uh, sure. And that, that one that Nisha's uh, definitely uh, got to win there, especially at that moment of the game. But still, they're able to hold the uh, Florida Mayhem and not have any time bank. Uh, we'll see if the Chengdu Hunters can get anything going on off it. It'll be uh, the double shield defense here with the Reinhardt uh, from the Florida Mayhem. Uh, and then they can you know, split players off the May walls, get quite aggressive. Uh, this is... The, the legs and McCree, yeah. the Arisa. Uh, this is just to put down tons of damage, but 
I mean, why not like Man, Hanzo here, right? This I mean, is the dream. This is exactly what Florida wanted when they chose this yeah. map. So they don't get to play their style on the attack because of the ridiculous comp from the Hunters. But now they get to play. Spawn came with the Ryan, and the Hunters want to play their way. But that might be their undoing here in this uh, deciding map if the Hunters don't make it happen. And it looks like they're going to stay on this. Uh, 76 McCree. Uh, where this is what you would have loved to have, like Jinmu, right? You can play the Farah here at the spawn door. You can play uh, Hanzo as well. So they're just looking for players to split off. Chengdu are hard to track, though. I, I, yeah, it's OG constantly looking around, wondering where he needs to be looking. Mix is able to find two, and here's that amplification matrix. So the Hunters actually break out of a pretty unlikely scenario. Their comp is odd, to be fair. Bye-bye. Double hit scan, no snipers. Bye. But the mayhem, uh, look, they get Yaki caught out of position, I guess it unravels from there. It does require, of course, an ant matrix, but Gangnam didn't use one of his own. Yeah, it's Anisha getting that first pick on the Yaki, which is huge. So uh, you lose that May Walls. It's a massive advantage there for Chengdu. And, and you do have a decent amount of damage, right? With Discord Orb plus the, uh, the 76 and the McCree. This is a Tac Visor use. Yeah, Jimmy that's about how it goes. <laughs> Not able huh? to get anything. Jimmy, uh, yeah, Jimmy, no hands, unfortunately, in that case. Not a whole lot you can do when you're caught inside that small room, but there he is. He makes good now, comes out, and the supercharger really sets it up for what I can see. Oh, Yaki, no time for snow here in the streets of Havana. And what do you want to play against this if you're the Florida Mayhem? Do you want to continue to run these Reinhardt base comps? Uh, could you play. The, the Winston Zarya against this. Uh, I mean, see what they decide to do. That blizzard there towards the end thought Yaki was going to switch, but decides not to. I wonder if the Mayhem even know what to do against this. I mean, theoretically, I don't see what's wrong with their composition, actually. Uh, you know, I think the Hunters crumbled a pressure. The yeah, there's mobility for Jimmy. He can get away. They need to take off angles with the Soldier, though. Yeah, the, the thing is, is they just keep finding these off angles, like you mentioned. Like, Chengdu's not engaging, they just want to sit around the Orisa and the Sigma. And, and just different angles with the Soldier and the McCree, just taking tons of damage. All it takes is a Transcendence here to keep the Hunters alive. The Mayhem have a ton of alpha damage, right? So, like, the front loader, the initial burst as they run in is really significant. But if you can weather that storm, that's where, like, a Soldier, the McCree, as the fight goes longer, really start to punish you. There's still a Zenyatta, so if OG wants to swing, he has to drop that shield and get stuck with a Discord Orb like that. And we see from Leave's point of view, right, putting down some shots on that left-hand side, and Jimmy's all the way on the opposite side of the map as Soldier 76 just peppering damage. Uh, just not damage that you can just take and eat. So th this now, you're going to have the Tracer come back, and OG on the ball. So as much as we said this wasn't really a ball map, that's what they're going to go to here to try and stop this. Yeah, and of all places to play it here as well. I suppose there's not a lot to... I mean, there's still a Discord Orb in play. So you can definitely punish, especially with a flashbang involved. I suppose Soldier doesn't feel like he has a whole lot of ways of answering this here, but... The displacement is important, I think, especially if you can knock people away from Gaga Shield, but... See you later. I, I'm, yeah, it's a, it's a weird pick to be sure, man. Bye-bye. And the, the ball could have been with the Tracer just to get back to the spawn, because you wouldn't necessarily play the ball with, like, Lucio Batiste. Uh, yeah, hard to heal. The sound barrier to engage here. Everyone groups up here, but that's perfect for Gargoyle. The Gravitic Flux going to catch many of the Hunter's players. Transcendence, though, straight away. Monk has it available. He's been causing some real problems for the Mayhem so far. And OG gets flashed there and taken down. That's the Discord Orb applied. A lot of damage to follow it up. And the Hunters, again, they weather the initial push of the Mayhem, and they just crack back at them. And you still three players here on the flank for Florida. Oh, and this is good. And they're not going to be able to get to the cart now. Gravity Flux holds them up. They're very low. Gangnam Jimmy has to use the regenerative burst. Is there time? Okay, Ant Matrix from the backside, but OG gets caught. I think the Hulk makes it hard for him to touch the cart. Nisha loses that immortality field, but Elsa's in trouble here. A lot of pressure, and the Sigma falls. Flashbang the Arky, though. That's one way of getting rid of a Tracer. The cart is just so close, and Gargoyle now finds himself short on allies as the Hunters. They really fly they, by the seat of their pants, man. I mean, these teams are so split. You, you have three players on the flank, uh, then, uh, you know, three players coming from the other side from the spawn. Uh, full-on changes here for the Florida Mayhem. So, 
Uh, they'll have uh, Widow Tracer uh, with the double shield, so they'll put uh, OG back uh, onto Arisa. So uh, he's playing Reinhardt a little bit, then the ball. Uh, and then now you'll play Batiste Zen. So uh, a match of the tanks, a match of the supports. And then uh, Leave will be playing the Fumso here. So going for those halts with the dragons again. Yeah, again, BQB has to face off against two snipers, this time from a defensive position, which is arguably harder because the, the way the places he can pick from are a little bit more predictable. Jimmy has a crack there at Yaki, who tries to get up close. Yaki will not let this back line go. He knows he has to get the lion's share of value here for the Mayhem, and he needs to do it without much being invested in him, conversely. But this is his Ant element. Matrix. Yeah, Ant Matrix Supercharger, potentially, uh, for the Chengdu Hunters. So that's the Ant Matrix. Discord Orb also forces players back. So it's going to get Chengdu a ton of space. Oh my gosh, look at them. They push through this arch. BKB goes down again. It's a tough life to play the Widow against the double sniper here. And he didn't have any real safe spots to peek from. OG looks resplendent there as the sun glints off of him. But unfortunately, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lap to end it here. The Gargoyle falls. And now again, Yaki, who didn't find value like he was supposed to, just looks on as his team gets decimated. Wow. The Hunters, they're going to make this a map five, man. They are a long way ahead, and the Mayhem the, needs something special on the map of their choosing, no less. I was just going to say, this is a Florida Mayhem map pick. And they pick it to not see Wrecking Ball base compositions. And Chengdu comes out and plays double shield Batiste Zen with the 76 McCree. And, and just starts rolling. Uh, and how do you, you can't even prepare for this if you are the Florida Mayhem. Uh, you never would have expected this type of comp to come up. And if you were, you would not have picked this map because you would not have wanted to deal with it. The Mayhem, OG, very capable player, but he definitely doesn't look like he wants to sort of match ball in these scenarios or trying to find a way to break this oppressive double shield sniper. Now this, this composition has been more meta agnostic and, and really specific to to Havana over over the months and, and years that it's sort of been in the game. These super long sightlines, especially on point they make it so strong. Now the mayhem, if they if they acknowledge that this sort of Reinhardt based composition with the Lucio is is the way to play right now, then theoretically should be able to beat Chongdu's setup, but so far it really hasn't. It, whether it's the execution lacking or something else, the Mayhem haven't found the answer, Matt. They need to find it now. It is absolutely do or die. They don't want to go to a map five. They don't want to go to control when Jinmu comes back in and gets on the Farah. And they're going to go back to the ball. So th this is a map pick where you didn't want to play ball. Uh, in, in, uh, they they kind of force you back onto it. Is uh, OG will just be on the cart moving it. Uh, you'll have Gargoyle the supports working from the side. Leave is so dangerous here. We saw what he did last time. The Mayhem tried to do this. The first fighting off with five kills. And that's a pretty clever use of the Sonic Arrow there. Has a good idea of what's going on on the high ground there. And that card is... Well, she ain't moving, man. I'll give you the big tip. Gangnam Jin down. That's that pick you're looking for. Not a great start. No mercy available for the Mayhem. No mercy being provided by the Hunters. So what do you do now? Gangnam Jin's going to come back on the Zen. It's going to take him forever, though. Uh, somebody's going to have to move on to the card. Oh. It'll be Gargoyle as you lose Yaki now. The Hanzo from Leave has been crazy good. As it's really turned the tides. Kicking and screaming. The Mayhem bit by bit have been dragged into the Chengdu zone. And now you're in their world. Yaki just headbutted that arrow from Leave. And he's going to oh. have a Dragon Strike to get away with though. Nisha down, unless... Mercy now gone, but BQB gets picked off by Leave. Again, this Hanzo is absolutely next level. Gargoyle trying to move the car, but now without Yaki, there's no one to pressure the back line. All the heads swivel towards the Sigma. Leave is dodged behind the car. He has, he has had an outstanding performance on this map, on this pick. Slime gets rid of him here, but it's just the dregs of the mayhem that are able to filter through. OG hard to catch so far, but now with an amplification of Matrix, yeah, he presents himself and he gets taken down. The Hunters will do it. They hold the Mayhem off and they set themselves up with a pretty clear path to victory. So if you sit Spawndor, if you're Florida, and you all die at the same time, you get a second fight. So right. they could play uh, they could play the same way they played last time, play extremely close, and then play for that final fight on the corner. 
Uh, they, they probably are in a pretty poor position in terms of, like, if Jimmy or Leave are playing the 76 McCree in terms of positioning, like getting high ground and whatnot. It's probably their best chance. Uh, you play close. Let's say, best case scenario, you're able to get 30, 30 40 seconds off the Ready clock. Uh, you, you know, the next fight kicks off right where the box of victory is, uh, as you see on your screen there. You know, pr uh, probably under a minute. Uh, 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 you know, maybe even like 45, 50 seconds. So, I mean, you're really, if you're Florida, and obviously you would love to get like a, a hold here at the spawn door, it's not going to happen. You you basically want to say, hey, we want to, we all want to die. We want to get this hold. And we want to die with basically, you know, a minute 45 on the clock, a minute 30, uh, ideally. So if you can hold for a minute, that's a huge win. 45 seconds, 30 seconds. You definitely need Grim determination now for the Florida Mayhem as this has gone past a joke for them. A reverse sweep. I mean, what a ridiculous situation that would be. It's on the table. The legs are locked and Jimmy gets back over the wall. Nisha, not so lucky. It's a fantastic start for Florida. And they're doing something that they didn't do the last time. They were very indecisive the last time. They like walled one side, started to move towards it, then looked at the other side. That time they, they saw three players on the right. They they walled, they speed boosted, they ran right toward. They ignore the players on the left. That's how they have to play this. And look, they already got that 35 seconds I was talking about. It's a time by to be sure. The Florida oh, Mayhem, it is, it is a huge task. Slime keeps getting these boobs, trying to knock these players in. Almost gets some over towards his right hand side. That's a hold though from Gaga out of spawn, gets the headshot, but he falls down still. The Mayhem struggling here, they're going to lose their numbers. They're dying on the card though, as Matt suggested, and here we are. Yeah, I mean, this is the exact scenario I was talking about, right? They got it to about a minute 35. This next fight with the payload progress, right? You'll, you'll have Slime get them into it. Probably be about 50 seconds on the clock, a minute. In fact, Chengdu pushes up a little bit. We may see it actually kick off earlier than that is Chengdu wants to get aggressive. They have J Jimmy on the outside. They only keep one on the cart. Now, you know, yeah, you're going to be able to just rotate to the cart here. If you're they want to build this transcendence the if they can. Side. They already used the immortality field, though. OG sits back on the cart. His shield is broken. That Orisa pressure makes it hard for him to keep it up. And that's the damn matrix. OG wants to try and get past the shield, but he can't get there. He's got to retreat. Try and get his shield back in action. 45 seconds left in the round. He's a dead eye. Leave. Gets nothing. Gangnam just shuts him down. There is going to be a transcendence here for Monk, but do the Hunters want to spend it right now? They can't. Not with Gaga going down. The Mayhem somehow have found a foothold here, and Monk gets staggered at the end of the fight. Nisha needs to be able to get away, but the wall says no. This is getting dangerous for Chengdu, Matt. And Chengdu had high ground control. Uh, you have the high ground control. You have the double hit scan with the McCree and the 76. It's Gaga over the ball, trying to get there to get a touch. You have a transcendence and attack visor if you can make it. One mistake from either team could be the entire series right here. Jimmy, what? that might have been it. The tactical visor was available, but Yaki finds him at long range. He puts him on ice. A flanking shatter. OG wants to do a Jungu impression, and it's two inside the flux. It's going to be also to go down to the blizzard here. They catch out the Sigma, and this is it. The Mayhem, they come alive. What a crucial moment to do so now. Wrecking Ball on Carver. Gaga, ooh la la, you're in trouble. The Hunters, they've run out of the magic, and it is the Mayhem that will be advancing in the lower bracket. Oh, and that is such a huge win there, just confidence-wise, for the Florida Mayhem, as Chengdu on the Florida Mayhem's map pick was really giving it to them. That composition with the 76 and the McCree is a big difference maker. Just not enough in the end. So, uh, man, Ch Chengdu really started to come back in this series. Florida's got to be happy it ended there. Is That was starting to get scary. Over every era of the Overwatch League that they have been in, the Hunters have been a pain to play against, right? I think that Havana map demonstrates to you that even if you come into a, the match with a plan, the Hunters have this uncanny ability of turning it on its head. And the Mayhem had to rely on nothing more but determination and discipline there to execute, you know, the, the spawn, hold, and then push out. The magic of leave seemed to be absent there in that, in that sort of final round. And 
I mean, losing a player so early there to just a random headshot from Yaku, who then, by the way, goes to just throw a Blizzard in the back line as Elsa tried to come out of spawn there, make it even harder for the Hunters. That is absurd. One of the most hair-raising matches of Overwatch I have ever seen. <laughs> Wild match. I mean, there, there's so many different uh, scenarios and play. We saw Eamon come in for Blizzard World. Uh, and then just the the different types of things that Chengdu, and that's why like teams like uh, Chengdu, uh, team obviously like the Dallas Fuel, extremely scary to see in these types of matches and situations because they can throw so many different things at you that you don't expect. Uh, in, in that one, Chengdu uh, just not enough at the end. I mean, and it's tough for the Hunters because they play such fantastic style, but they've shown uh, some incredible performances so far. Someone else obviously on the side of the Mayhem who really stepped up today is our Player of the Match presented by Xfinity. And from start to finish, it was all about Yaki. When it was the Mayhem making money moves, it was Yaki that was mauling the Hunters. Just some not only unlikely plays from him across the series, but just outright ridiculous. Things that I've not really seen before. <laughs> it's the little things at times as well. That body block there was pretty instrumental in that overtime the, fight. But what a player this guy has the, turned the, out to be. The, the first two maps on Tracer, he was just absolutely dominant. Uh, they had no answer for him. Was giving the backline so much trouble for the Hunters. Uh, and then even at the uh, even on uh, Havana here, I know the, the headshot with the May to really seal the deal. Also, Genji winning the 1v1 against Nisha's Brig is massive, allows them to actually complete the map. Uh, which, when Chengdu goes on their offense, they complete the map. If Florida doesn't do that, and Yaki doesn't make that play, uh, well, we're in a fifth map right now. But Tracer was very strong. Uh, if he can play the Tracer at this level, it, it, teams are going to have a very difficult time stopping the Florida Mayhem because they can play all the other different comps. You love Gargoyle on the Sigma. You know, OG's Ryan looked quite good. The ball compositions Florida has very strong. Uh, it, 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 they're going to be a tough out. I mean, that, this is a reason why, I mean, they, they almost end up getting, you know, reverse swept, taken to a game five there. But one of the reasons I really like them coming in this tournament is they can play everything uh, at, a, at a reasonable level. They can switch, make the adjustments when necessary. That time they almost got caught, though. Chengdu was able to come up with some stuff that they were not able to exactly figure out on the fly. And so one team from the East region remains here in the main melee, and that is the Shanghai Dragons. And on the other side, of course, the Florida Mayhem have earned themselves a rematch here. I'm sure there's a grudge to settle, a score indeed. Let's see if the Florida Mayhem are made of the right stuff. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, we get an interview with Gargoyle himself. The Overwatch League is brought to you by the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Go to takemetomanoa.org today.
Welcome to Game Break presented by Pringles. We're joined now here by Gargoyle from Florida Mayhem. Gargoyle 선수, 안녕하세요. 네, 안녕하세요. All right, so let's be honest. You guys look like a totally different team from yesterday. What changes did you guys make coming into today's match? And how were you guys able to adapt so quickly? 솔직히 말씀드려서 어제 플로리다 메임과 오늘 저희가 방금 본 플로리다 메임은 완전 좀, 완전 좀 다른 팀이라고 느껴질 정도로 굉장히 오늘 플레이를 잘하셨는데 어, 이렇게 하루 만에 어떻게 좀 많은 변화가 있을 수 있었나요? 어, 어제 살짝 부족된, 부족한 점을 생각하면서 전 경기를 따로 개인적으로 보고 그 다음에 이제 그걸 고쳐서 실행하려고 노력했습니다. Right. Um. It's pretty simple. You know. Um. We know that we made a couple mistakes in our matches yesterday against Shanghai, and um. We sort of went to the VOD reviews. We watched all the games with our coaches and everyone on the team, and we sort of really looked carefully on what mistakes that were what mistakes were made, and we tried our best in today's match to not make the same mistakes and to better ourselves for our match. All right. And also. Shanghai Dragons, you guys will be facing off against Shanghai Dragons in I don't know how long, but pretty very very soon. Um, and Shanghai Dragons have been using a variety of different comps throughout the tournament so far. And so, what do you? I guess what I'm trying to ask you is like, what did you learn from yesterday's match against Shanghai Dragons that you could implement in the remix in the rematch that is going to happen very soon? Uh, Shanghai 팀과 다시 오늘 또 이제 리매치죠. 다시 한번 또 이제 겨루게 되실 텐데 이번에는 승리를 거두기 위해서. 좀 어떤 거를 어, 좀 배우 자, 어제 어제 경기에서 좀 어떤 걸 배웠고 그걸 좀 어떻게 사용하실 생각이십니까? 어 어제 나온 건좀큰 실수가 많아가지고 진것 같은데 이제 저희가 원래 하던 대로 그냥 똑같이 스크림 때처럼 긴장 안 하고 하면 충분히 이길 것 같습니다. 그 아, 되게 큰 실수가 있다고 했는데 뭐한두 가지만 말씀해 주실 수 있나요? 어뭐 그냥 살짝 궁 실수나 그냥 아니면 저희 사소한 그 템포 다 같이 들어가는 거 그런 거말 맞춰서 이제 하나하나 다 고쳐서 저희가 이기도록 하겠습니다. All right, thank you so much, Gargoyle. So, um, according to Gargoyle, they did make some huge mistakes in their match against Shanghai Dragons yesterday. That's what they learned. Um, so I did follow up asking if he could so sort of specify what kind of mistakes those were. And he mentioned that uh, specifically, um, they had some mistakes in their alt usage and also uh, sort of bringing back the tempo. So there was a tempo problem. Uh, so those two are the big uh, major mistakes that they made. And those two are the major things that they sort of worked on. And um, according to Gargoyle, if they just, you know, practice, uh, if they play how they practice and if they just bring their usual game of how they play, um, Gargoyle says that uh, they'll probably do very well against their rematch with Shanghai Dragons. That is happening very, very soon. All right, Gargoyle, that is it for the interview. Good luck, okay? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's yeah. head back to the desk. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Gargoyle. Congratulations to the Florida Mayhem. They are staying alive in the Mamie Lee with a hard-fought victory and will face the Shanghai Dragons in a winner-go-home match coming up shortly. But first, let's talk about our first elimination match of the tournament. Florida, they did have the upper hand for most of the series. Uh, Chengdu Hunters did manage to come back kind of uh, towards the later end of the series, but it was still the Mayhem taking it home. And I feel like this was the Mayhem we wanted to see heading into this tournament. They look like a very different team, as Danny already alluded to in the interview. And Gargoyle kind of held back with the specifics here. But Kasta, if I have to pick your brain, what are the most notable changes we're seeing from yesterday mayhem to today's mayhem? 
I completely agree with Gago on the fact that I think that ultimate usage was one of the biggest issues that they had. It felt like they were playing very desperate almost every time that they were going into the match against Shanghai and we didn't see that today against Chengdu. They were playing their comfortable style. Everything can be summed up in that beautiful flash shadow that we just saw from these guys. That's when I knew that these guys are going to be back on the form. This is the Florida mayhem that we were promised heading into you know this you know, playoff setup. So I do want to give massive props to Florida Mayhem. They look like they're on point. They look like they're back to their old selves. And I want to see this rematch versus Shanghai Dragons. There's so many storylines here. Last time we had an absolute... I'm not going to call it a banger. It was a slobber knocker. I think we're going to go with that one. Keep bringing that up. It was, it was chaos to say the least. I, I do want to give a special mention to Chengdu Hunters though. This True. should not be looked at as a failure for them throughout the entire Mei Melee. They've been so good. They've shown adaptation and not that... You know, obviously, 